We're going back in time to look at Lanky Box's craziest real life stories ever. From sharing the biggest mistakes in our entire lives to dating our best friend's sister, you will never believe how these stories end. Watch until the end to see what happened when we found Boxy Boo under our bed. Let's go! What is up, guys? Welcome to this episode of Lanky Box. Woo! Now, Adam, the story I'm going to tell you today. Oh, man. This is the story of the biggest mistake I ever made in my entire life. Now, this story takes place when I was in middle school. And, you know, back then, of course, I did not have that many friends. And the friends I did have, they were all guys. There was a 0% possibility that I was going to ever meet a girl. Like how, like, how would I even meet one? I don't have any friends that are girls. I'm too scared to talk to girls like there's no way so the way that i met this girl it was literally like fate the universe aligned and brought her into my life okay i was sitting in chemistry class learning about some molecules and stuff in, in middle, middle school? school yeah i got a big brain yeah so. and you were probably like i'm wondering if i have some chemistry with some of the girls in this <laughs> class i was sitting in chemistry class writing about molecules and stuff and out of nowhere woo! Nowhere, I heard an alarm. <laughs> Suddenly, an alarm goes off. I'm like, what? Ah, what's happening? Is it like a fire alarm? It was exactly that. It oh, was a fire drill. On this day, some kid, I don't know why, had actually set fire to like a bathroom trash can. So the whole school had to evacuate and go on the field. It's like a fire drill. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? The way they line you up in the fire drill line is they give everyone just a random number. Okay. okay. So that I got a random number and I go to my spot, kind of looking at it, kind of confused. And I look up and the girl with the number next to mine, so she was next to me in line, was literally like the most beautiful girl I had ever seen in my entire life. I was shook, okay? And I was just gonna stand next to her for like 15 minutes because you have to wait to go back inside when it's safe. I look up and this girl is just beautiful. I was uh. like, oh man. She asked me, she's like, oh, what's your name? I've never seen you before. I was like, I'm Justin, what's your name? She said, my name's Sarah. I was like, oh, cool, cool, cool. So we just like talked for like two minutes uh -huh. and then we went back to class uh -huh. and that was it. I was just waiting for the next fire drill, so I can see her again. Wait, so you didn't? You you guys were not in the same class? No, I never saw her outside of the fire drills. Oh! So I literally was like. So you were like about to start your own fire. <laughs> I was like, oh, is this flammable? <laughs> I was in chemistry class mixing up potions, <laughs> trying to start a combustion because some kid lit a trash can on fire. Our school decided we have to have more fire drills more often. So we literally had a fire drill every other week. We had two fire drills a month. Uh huh. So I got to. And know Sarah just seeing her like twice a month uh-huh that's why I say this relationship is fake. That is the most poetic thing ever. I mean, your numbers were like totally random. They're like, totally what are the odds that you ended up next to Sarah? That's what I'm saying. And if that kid had never set the trash can on fire, I would have never even met her. Over time, we got to know each other better. Anyways, I'm going to cut the long story short because what happens after is more interesting. But we literally actually ended up dating. Wait, what? Yes, we did. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Yes, we you did. You skipped such a big section. So you go from seeing her once every couple of weeks for two minutes to now we're boyfriend and girlfriend yes i just cut that how? Part out what do you mean how are you adam's like give me the secret <laughs> i don't understand how? oh okay so like you guys went from the fire drill you maybe like started hanging out a little bit and then you like asked her out yeah basically oh, okay like, that part of the story is not the super interesting part it was just like we just got to know each other better and we spent more time together and God. it was not like some big event where i was like do you want to be my girlfriend it was nothing crazy i remember one of our first dates was to go to the aquarium. I remember going to the aquarium and just walking around there for like three hours. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. I don't know why I remember the sea otters so clearly. Sea otters are really cute. They're very cute. They're very fluffy. They sit on their back and they eat like that. That's where I learned how to eat the way I do currently. <laughs> just put the donuts here and eat them. We literally went to the aquarium, hung out for like three hours, and then like went home. Like that was like a date. And then there was the second date. And this was the tragic mistake, Adam. Oh, this, no. I, I will say, up until this point, everything in the relationship was amazing. This sounds like the best relationship you've ever had. Well, I mean, you're forgetting about chicken. <laughs> but, okay. but yeah, like, this is pretty good. So this third time, she invited me to go over to her house to go hang out. I was really nervous. I showed up at the front door, and her whole family... They were such nice people. They were sitting in the living room and they were playing board games. They invited me to come play with them. It was so fun. I was like, dude, this is the greatest relationship ever. It was amazing. Wait, so you were at her house. Up until this point, had you guys like 
held hands or like kissed or anything like that? We had not done anything at all. Not even like hugged? No. Wow. No. Because in my head, i am be honest, in middle school Justy's head, that was not the priority. I was just like, there's this girl that I really like hanging out with. I didn't really care. It was like, whatever. Like, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't really understand how that stuff worked anyways, though. You know uh -huh. what I mean? So we played board games with her family a bit. It was like her mom, her dad, and her little sister. And then she goes, Justy, let's go upstairs and watch a movie together. I was like, wait, oh, um, wait, are you serious? We went upstairs and she goes, Justin, you can pick the movie. What movie do you want to watch? And I said, you know what? There's this movie I really like. It's called Batman the Dark Knight. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back on it, if I could talk to little Justy now, I would say, I don't know, play the notebook or yeah. something, play some anime, what are you doing? <laughs> but back then, I was like, yeah, I'll watch Batman. And literally- You're like showing her your Joker impression. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Dude, she was terrified. She was trying to just hang out and cuddle, and I'm- She's putting on some lipstick, you're like, oh, can I have some too? You wanna know how I got these scars? <laughs> <laughs> also, that movie's like three hours long. <laughs> I know, it's like three and a half hours long. We're sitting there alone, watching The Dark Knight. She's terrified, okay? She don't know what's going on. And then, as if, like, this is so crazy. The door opens, and her mom comes in. And her mom goes, oh, hey, your dad, your little sister, and I want to eat some ice cream, but we're all out at the house. <laughs> So we're gonna leave and go get ice cream. Wait, <laughs> what? That's what I don't Why do they all need to go to get ice cream? I don't know. I don't understand to this day. But of course, little Justy has no idea what's going on. <laughs> Me and her were sitting like this. You know what I mean? You had her arm I had, around her? I had the arm around just sitting like this. When her mom and everybody left, I was like, is something supposed to happen now? <laughs> Get nervous. <laughs> Get uncomfortable. I did not know what to do. This is kind of a bigger point. I don't know nowadays because of social media, I feel like kids kind of know how relationships work better. I don't know about you, but back then, I had no idea how any of this worked. No. So you're sitting there cuddling with her. You're like panicking or you're like, what do I do? Or did you did you just not think at all? Or were you just like, this is what you're supposed to do? Yeah, it was a mix. Like, I really was kind of just focused on the movie. I didn't really know. But I was also like, am I supposed to do something? My arm is falling asleep. <laughs> it's been three hours. <laughs> but basically, after this, I learned the very next day at school, I had made the biggest mistake of my life. After school the next day, Sarah comes up to me. She goes, hey, Justy, let's go over to the bleachers and just chill for a little bit. I was like, okay. Wait, so nothing happened during the dark night? Absolutely nothing happened. Okay. I, we finished the movie, I went home. Okay. Classic. We go out to the field, we go out to the bleachers, and she's, I, I thought we were just gonna hang out, just chat. She sits me down and goes, Justin, it's been great hanging out. You know, I've had a lot of fun. I really like you, but I think we should break up. Wait, what? That hit me like harder than like any time I've been hit in a zero budget or any content. I literally ooh, put a Roblox out. Ooh. Wait, wait, wait. That's actually so sad. Dude, like it she came, broke up with you? It came it came out of nowhere. She's broke. I was like, what? Did I you ask her like why? Yeah. And she was just like, oh, you know, uh, uh, you know, she I mean she didn't really give me a clear reason. But then I learned the real reason the next day. Over the months of dating Sarah, I had gotten to know some of her friends, uh -huh. right? So she had this friend named Amber. And I remember talking to Amber being being like, you know, what what happened? Why did my world just crumble <laughs> yesterday? I don't understand. She basically told me that Sarah had orchestrated the entire movie night thing so that like something, I don't know, like a kiss or something could happen. Yeah. And that I failed. Like it was some sort of exam that I failed to pass. <laughs> like she literally told me, she was like, Sarah got rid of all of the ice cream in her house so that she knew her parents and sister would leave. Wait. What? I don't know how. Wait, she like threw it out and she like eat it all? I still don't know. If she ate it all, then that's actually the love of my life. I gotta find her. Wait, wait, wait. So she planned everything. She like brought you over. She brought you into her room. So when you like picked the dark night, that was like your first fail. That was like strike number one. <laughs> and then her family left and then you didn't do anything. That was strike number two. And then strike number three was probably my Joker impression. <laughs> Let's put a smile on that face. <laughs>
happened. In her defense, she kind of like did do a she really did. good job. She did an insanely good like, job. Like she set everything up. She like lobbed you a great pass and then you just dropped the ball. Oh, I just airballed. I yeah. like, okay, okay. <laughs> I didn't understand. But like I said, back then, for us, like relationships, they were so innocent. Like I had no idea what was happening. Justin, I'm gonna be telling you a story. Okay. Of why I loved school lunches. Okay, who does it? I know, okay, so when you were growing up, like elementary school, yes. did you get to order school lunch? I did once in a while, and those those were great days. Right? Oh, man. Right, okay, oh, man. so this story gets intense. Okay. Actually intense. You might start sweating. I'm an intense person, but the sweating is all you. Okay, and those clammy hands. So this story starts when I was in fifth grade. I was 10 years old. Okay, okay. Now, how it was set up was, Every day you could order school lunch. It was like two or three dollars, yes. right? My mom at the start of the year put in enough money so I could have five school lunches a year. What? Every other day I five had to bring, a year? I had to bring my own lunch. And if I own lunch. <laughs> It would be like some like peanut butter and jelly and like some apples. Wait, got, like, five, I thought you were gonna say five a week or no, five a month. No, five a year. Five school lunches per year. What, what was your mom's reasoning for that? She thought that food from our house was healthier. Oh, yeah. okay. Which okay, is fair. Okay, it okay. probably is. Yeah, yeah, probably. Now at my school, I don't know about you guys where you, where you are, if you're in the United States or not, but at my school we had like classic stuff like pizza, pizza. chicken nuggets, oh, burgers, like corn dogs, corn dogs, oh, we had burgers. Oh, stuff like all that. my favorite food exactly in one place. exactly but when I brought lunch from home it was always the same thing it was a sandwich and some apples and maybe some crackers you're forgetting the grass you're forgetting the sweet sweet fruits from the top of the tree but that's okay sandwich is pretty good <laughs> now normally because I would bring it in a lunchbox right it would get all crushed yeah and so I would be sitting at the table all right here we go uh -huh. take out my PB and J it's uh -huh. all crushed I look over my friend he's got a nice plate with a big burger uh -huh. and a corn dog. Uh -huh. I'm so jealous. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, your friend wouldn't share? Did you ask, hey, could I have a little bit? No. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. That's not a real friend. Would you have shared with me? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Come on now. Hey, you already know if, we, if I was in that cafeteria with you, I have about six burgers and about 400 chicken nuggets. Can I have some? Absolutely not. No. So another thing I forgot to mention was that on Fridays at my school, uh -huh. they had this special thing where they would give us popcorn. <laughs> okay. So they would have like one of the parents' moms volunteer to make popcorn, and my mom was one of those moms. Oh, man. So oh. once a month on Friday, she would come and make popcorn, and every kid could buy a bag for 25 oh, cents. Oh, it's not free? I thought it was free. 25 cents. What? a ripoff! <laughs> Your school is running a business! So my mom would sometimes come in, right? Uh -huh. And it was always like a great time. Once like a she, month. Yeah, once yeah, a month. Okay, okay. It was always fun. She would always come over to me. I, like She sometimes like speak me like a free popcorn. Your mother is embezzling popcorn from the school! <laughs> no, no, no! I'm reporting that! One day I was like, I want to use one of my five school lunches. Oh, Today's man. the day. Why? But like, why? I was <laughs> feeling myself. I was like, I gotta flex. You know, I want to be like the cool kid. Cause I would see everyone line up and they'd look so cool. And yeah. I'd just be sitting there at the table alone uh, eating my sandwich. Cause uh, most kids man. order lunch. Yeah, yeah. In my head I was like, okay, I, what I want is a burger and some white milk, just normal milk. Uh -huh. That is my dream meal. A burger and milk. That's what I want to eat. <laughs> so I get in line, I punch in my number, whatever. So I grab my tray, I point to the thing, she puts it on. Oh man. I keep going and I go to grab the milk and I'm like, wait, this is a fish wish. This what? is a fish sandwich. What's a fish wish? It's like a burger except for instead of You didn't burger, really said fish wish. What's a fish wish? It's a fish burger. Put it back! Get a regular burger! I was already too far down the line, and I was too scared oh, no. to go like back. I thought I would get in trouble, and they would like not give me anything. Oh, really? Yeah. You already know me. I be, hey, I don't mess with no fish wishes <laughs> up in here. Give me a real burger. You were too scared? Yeah. I was oh, like, oh no. man, I got a fish sandwich. So I grabbed my milk, whatever, put it on, went to my table. Oh. Put it, I was so sad. You wasted your one out of five on a fish switch. Yeah, and I go to sit down at the table. I open my milk and I start to drink it and it's pink. What? I'm like, what is this? And it says on the carton, strawberry. <sighs> I was like, no. Because, you, you, because the white milk, 
and the strawberry milk both come in white cartons. You had one job! Get a burger and the regular milk! Exactly. And you got a fish swish! <laughs> and some strawberry milk! You, you trolling! My day was ruined. Yeah! I was literally about to cry. You guys don't know how important <laughs> yeah, this right. was to I me. was literally, you were definitely crying. You eat the fish I don't want a fish <laughs> So I, I basically was just depressed the entire day. Probably the entire the week. The entire month, honestly. Yeah. My my whole year would be ruined. <laughs> I had to eat a fish swish. Have you never had a fish swish? That's not what it's called. It's called a fish sandwich. <laughs> Why you call it a fish wish? <laughs> like, I thought I thought Because I, I wish to never yeah. eat this fish. <laughs> When Duh. I said that the first time, I thought it was literally a fish that grants you a wish. <laughs> so I used one of my precious school lunches and I just belly flopped. Just everything went wrong. A tragedy. Sad. A tragedy. Now, during this time, uh -huh. my mom, for some reason, wanted to make our entire family vegetarian for like uh. a whole year. <laughs> I think it was because she wanted to go on a diet that was vegetarian, and since she cooked for everyone, she was like, all right, well, all of us are vegetarian. Wow, your mom's a savage. Yeah. Your mom's like, y'all doing what I'm telling you, and I don't want to hear no butt. <laughs> and she was basically like, if I catch you eating meat, you'll be in trouble. Because she wanted to make sure everyone was vegetarian. Right? And you know, this guy likes to eat burgers. <laughs> <laughs> So, you already know me, I don't like getting in trouble. I was just like you when you were younger. I was straight A's, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not eating any meat. So flash forward a couple months, right? It's probably like December, Christmas time. I'm like, I'm gonna use another one of my school lunches. Oh man. Now, it was probably like a Friday. I was, I was feeling good. I was like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get the lunch that I want. So I was like, well, what's the lunch I want? What is the lunch you want? The burger uh -huh. and the milk. Okay, but I wanted you want to get the thing. first time. Uh -huh. But I was like, wait a minute. Uh -huh. A burger is meat. I, I'm not supposed to eat this. Oh man. So then oh. you get that kind of like, ooh, I'm doing something wrong. This oh. kind of feels oh, you good. Get, oh, you get a rush. Right, you exactly. <laughs> so I go to the line. Man, I get so rushed when he's eating those burgers. <laughs> So I go into the line, I'm confident this time. I'm like, I know exactly what I want. Yeah. Punch in the number, <laughs> say to lunch lady, I'd like one burger. She's oh, like, okay, man. there's your burger. I made sure it was a burger this time. Uh -huh. Yeah, you even I'm checked like, it. Yep. I'm there's like, no, hey. there's no fish in this <laughs> wish. No, no, no. I, I go grab the milk, make sure it's the right milk, uh -huh, put it uh -huh, on the tray, uh -huh, I sit uh -huh, down, uh -huh, uh -huh. boom. Uh -huh. I got my meal that I wanted. I did it my way. So I pick up my burger. I'm about to go in for a big bite. And who do I see walk into the lunchroom? Me? My mom! Oh, what? It was popcorn day! Oh. And she was in charge of the popcorn! You idiot! <laughs> <laughs> this happens once a month! How did you do that? I don't know! I was so caught up in the burger, I just couldn't think! My brain got all foggy. So I see her walking in, wheeling this popcorn machine in. She got the popcorn in one hand, uh -huh, wheeling the machine. Uh -huh, uh -huh, She's uh -huh. all smiling. Uh -huh, I'm in the lunchroom. Uh -huh. I got my tray. Oh, man. And I was one of the first ones to sit down because I ran into the lunchroom that Naturally, day. Naturally. Yeah. I was the first one. All my other friends were still in line. Oh, so man. here I was alone, and she knows where I sit. She knows what class I'm in. She knows where to find me. So she's like, I look for the kid sitting by himself with no friend. <laughs> I know where my son is. So I'm like, OK. I have this burger. Uh -huh. I have to hide it because I'm uh, gonna get in trouble. Yeah. So I'm thinking like, do I take the patty out and like put it in my pocket? What? Do I try and eat the burger really quick so she can't see that I'm I ordered a burger? Because like she said, you cannot eat meat. And she said I get in trouble if I ate meat. So you really consider taking the patty out and hiding it? Yeah. I was considering like switching my tray with someone else, but I didn't have any friends. True. I didn't have anyone to switch it with. Oh man. So I started oh, sweating. I started oh, sweating. I was panicking. Here she comes. She's walking over with the popcorn machine. She sees me. She's waving and she starts walking over, kisses me on my head. And she's like, uh, I thought I told you not to eat meat. I was like, oh yeah, sorry. She's like, okay, just uh, in the future, just get like uh, a salad or something. I was like, okay. And then she just walked away. That was it. I didn't that even get in whole, trouble. That was a lot of build up to not that I didn't even get in I trouble. I thought she was about to say, <laughs> ooh, ooh, put some Roblox sound in there. Ooh, 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 ooh. Are you kidding me? That's all she said? That's literally it. Wow. Maybe she didn't give me free popcorn that day. Wow. Uh, but like, that was it. And the moral is, 
I guess if you don't want to live in constant fear, just do the right thing. We wanted to try something a little bit new. We want to try and do an animated story for you guys. Okay, okay. okay. Now, the story I'm going to be telling today is when I dated my best friend's sister. What are you talking <laughs> Okay, all right, hold up, hold up. This story gets I don't crazy. Have, I don't have a sister, so I already know you making this up. No, no, my, my other best friend. What are you talking I am your only best friend. No? Yes. <laughs> Yes, I am. This was before. Yes, I am. Okay. Yes, I am. Well, the yes, story. Yes, I am. <laughs> So this is a completely true story. Now, I was probably around 13 years old and my parents sent me off to a summer camp for two weeks. 13 years old, so that would be last year for you? <laughs> <laughs> this summer camp was in the mountains, okay? In the mountains. So picture a camp in the middle of nowhere. Like, so, like some snowy mountains or some hot No, no, no it was hot in the summer. Oh, yeah. man. So there was about 30 other campers besides me. At that age, I was so shy. I didn't talk to anybody. So half the campers were guys and half were girls. And okay. this was before I really ever talked to girls. Like right. ever. So, oh, you must have showed up and went like, what are these? <laughs> no. Oh, these are what girls look like. <laughs> the second I got there, my parents dropped me off, right? Uh -huh. And they're like, all right, uh -huh. have a good next two weeks. Uh -huh. They left. Okay. I was so scared yeah. that I went to the bathroom yeah. and my nose started bleeding. What? Yeah. That's Wait, how nervous that, I was. That's like some scary movie, spooky, middle of the woods stuff. And then there was no toilet paper in the stall yet because they were they were still setting up the camp. <laughs> so I was hiding and I had to use my finger to stop the nosebleed. And so I, I came out of the bathroom with blood all over my you hands. Came <laughs> you came out of the bathroom. All the other campers like, did that guy just attack a small animal in the bathroom stall? The whole point of that was saying I was terrified of this camp. They had like the introduction so they had all the camp counselors gather all the kids around, right? And yeah. we all gathered in this big cafeteria room. At this initial meeting with the counselors, they said the rules, you know, you have to be in bed by this time. And one of the big rules they said was there is no dating at this camp. No dating? At You're all. only there for two weeks. Exactly. How do you date somebody in two weeks? You'd be amazed. It Nitty. takes me two <laughs> lifetimes to date somebody. How are you going to make a relationship <laughs> in two weeks? See, I was like, well... That shouldn't really bother me. I'm not gonna get a girlfriend here because I haven't had one before, right? True, true. Well, what if I told you I actually got a girlfriend here? I would say that's about as fake as Bigfoot himself. <laughs> the first friend I made at this camp, his uh, name was Ryan. Ryan. And he was cooler. He was older. He was one of the 15-year-old kids there. Wow. And he was way cooler. He had like shaggy hair and he was like a skater dude. That and here I was cool. with my Pokemon cards and all this stuff. You brought Pokemon cards yeah. to camp? I got lonely. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, I might not make any friends at this camp, but at least I can talk to my Pikachu. <laughs> I became friends with this Ryan guy, and uh -huh. he basically took me under his wing. Where this story is headed, it sounds like you're gonna end up telling me you started dating Ryan. Because <laughs> that's what this sounds like. Well, Ryan had a younger sister at the camp oh, oh, named Rachel, this... who was my age. Okay, I see where this uh -huh. is going. So basically, Yikes. basically at meal times when we would eat in the cafeteria, I would eat with Ryan because I was his friend, right? Yeah, because you're so you got to sit at the cool table. Exactly, uh -huh. and basically his. Uh -huh. sister Rachel would eat with him too because she was nervous and new, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. So we all ended up eating together. Me, Ryan, and Rachel. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. I, I know, I know this story is getting very uh, suspenseful, but there's really only one thing on my mind, which was, how was the food at the cafeteria? <laughs> it was really good. Okay, what yeah. were you guys eating? Give me, paint me a picture. We had a lot of like meatballs, lasagna, mashed potatoes, stuff like that. Okay, Yeah. okay, I'm just, now I'm just picturing you eating a giant meatball <laughs> with your new buddies. Okay, okay. <laughs> and me and Rachel started talking more because we were already around each other. Around each other eating those meatballs. Yep. 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 yep, yep, yep. So I would, I would talk to her. We were both really shy people, but we would talk a lot more and we kind of became friends. And like, I think she actually, I would show her my Pokemon cards. And she thought they were cool. Stop. Stop. She thought they were cool. That's, re that's really how you thought you want to impress her? What if I pull out my holographic Charizard? Do you want to date me now? I kind of started to develop, you know, a little bit of a crush on her. I yeah. got a little more nervous what, when I was no, around no, her. Slow it down. What about her drew you to her? Well, she was a girl. Uh, she talked to me, and that was, that was enough. 
<laughs> well, I hadn't had that well, before. She was a girl and she didn't run away when I talked to her. That's all I needed. So another thing I forgot to mention was there was no cell phone service at the camp. What? Because you were so high up in the mountain. We weren't allowed to text each other because we couldn't text each other. Yeah. So at night, the counselors let the boys and girls passed notes, written notes, in between each other. So all the boys would be in one room, and all the girls would be in another. And the counselors would bring notes back and forth in between the two rooms. Oh, it's like a primitive version of DM. Yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. now I understand. I had to shoot my shot, you know? I had to go for it. So I wrote a little note to Rachel and I said, hey, like, what is it like having your older brother at this camp? Ha ha ha. I had some, like, ha -ha. smiley faces. I had some ha ha he he. Yeah, and there. I sent it over to her. Now, the counselors read each message before they give it to her, right? Oh. Because they don't want you guys, like, secretly being like, yo, like, let's, you know, let's prank someone or uh, whatever. Uh -huh, so they read the messages uh -huh. and then they give it to you, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. So the counselor took my note. He's like, okay, cool. Gave it to Rachel. Uh -huh. I got a note back from Rachel. Uh -huh. She's like, oh, it's so nice. Ha -ha. And then I was like, should I just go for it? Should I hope that they don't read my message? Wait, you really, wow, you really took that big of a risk? Yeah. No way. Yeah. No way. So I said, hey, Rachel, I'll be honest. I think you're really cute and I like you. There's no way. I literally There's said no that. Way. I literally no way. said that. And you just were banking on the fact that they wouldn't read it? Yeah. I crumpled it up really tiny and put it with all my other friends' notes. And I'm like, oh, here's all our notes. And then they went over to pass it back. And I was praying they wouldn't intercept it. What if they read it? You would get kicked out of that camp so fast. <laughs> Maybe I knew it was you from the start in the bathroom. You little note passing, bloody handed little fiend. The note got through. Wow. I got one of the cooler counselors. He didn't really look at them that closely. Yeah. And then he delivered it to Rachel. I, I'm impressed. You you might have a future working at the Justy Spy Corp. Because that, that is impressive. Good job. Yeah. Message now, received. Now, I did not get a message back. So that night, she I left was you, like, she left you on red. Literally, literally, literally. Yikes! She left me on red, and I was like, ah, oh, I blew it. Like I shouldn't. Have. Well, maybe it got intercepted. Like I started going to like, what was the worst case scenario? The next day at lunch, I was really nervous, right? Because yeah. I was like, did she read it? Did she yeah. not? Did it get intercepted? Am I gonna get in trouble? Sitting there eating your meatballs. So I pull up next to Rachel. Yes. And I set my food down. Yes. Uh, and I'm just kind of like, hey, how's it going? Uh huh. And uh, she's like, hey, um, by the way. I like you too. What? <laughs> yeah, I'm not lying. I'm not lying. She was like, I didn't want to send one back because I was worried that they would get intercepted. Uh -huh, uh -huh, this is uh -huh. true. This yeah, is a hey, true story. Hey, you ain't got a lot of us, Adam. Hey, you ain't got a lot of us, Adam. You ain't got, we like you. We, you ain't got a lot of us. You really, you really expect me to believe you just came down and like in a movie, she goes, I like you too. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. From that point forward, we hung out all the time. We were never allowed to be alone at camp. We were like, hey, like once the camp is over, like, like we should become boyfriend and girlfriend. The camp is over, we go home. On the drive home, I texted her and I was like, hey Rachel, it was so great to meet you. Like, I really hope we can keep hanging out. And she was like, yeah, yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to. Yeah. So I asked her on a date. I was like, I'm just gonna go for it. This is my one chance. Yeah, you gotta shoot your shot, you yeah. guys. Hey, you gotta so 13 year old Adam was like, you know what? what where should I take her? to the movies. So I'm like, hey, Rachel, I'd love to take you to the movies. And she said, okay, let's go. I had my dad drive me to the movies, but guess who drove her to the movies? Her brother, Ryan. Oh, oh. And her oh, parents made no. Ryan oh, sit in between us at the movies. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's not even the saddest part of the movie. What happened? So we finished the movie, right? Yeah. I said pretty much nothing to her the entire time because I was so nervous. Yep. So we go out to the lobby of the movie theater where they sell the popcorn and they have the games and all that stuff. My dad comes to pick me up and I see him walking up into the theater and he's like, all right, say goodbye. Say goodbye. This was my chance. My one chance to hug her or kiss her on the cheek. Oh yeah, in your dreams. And you know what I do? Yeah, what? I went in for the hug yep. and I hugged Ryan and then I high-fived Rachel. <laughs> and then I left. I was so nervous. <laughs> about my dad seeing me with a girl. I hugged Ryan, and then I went for the high five on Rachel. <laughs> Stop. And then, on the way home, she broke up with me through time. <laughs> she texted me, she's like, I don't think this is gonna work out. 
and then we never talked again. It's because you're a bad high fiver. That's what it is. That's what it is. You had those sweaty hands. No. When he high fived her, her whole hand was just covered instantly in Adam's sweat. And that's it. We that's broke the up. Story. She broke up with me, and I never <laughs> talked to her again. And I never talked to another girl again in my life. We're gonna be talking about some of our worst ever job experiences. Oh man, now, 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 <laughs> one of my first jobs was I was a lifeguard. Uh-huh. Well, being a lifeguard takes a lot of training. You gotta get CPR certified. It's not a joke. Well, you gotta guard people's lives. You gotta be responsible for people's lives. During lifeguard school, during the whole training, I thought, oh man, I'm gonna be on a sunny beach. I'm gonna be like those people you see in the movies, you know, running in slow motion to save some girl from drowning, you know, from, from a shark sharks. attack. Yeah, I'm probably gonna punch a shark and save a life. It was gonna be sick. Uh huh. Okay? That's all I was thinking. But when I actually did get my certification, they randomly assign where each lifeguard goes to, like, as far as like pools, okay, within the city. I got assigned to a city pool. So it was like a very small indoor pool, a lot of kids screaming all day. <laughs> I got a headache pretty fast, and all you do all day, right, is just sit there, right? And just hope that nothing goes wrong, uh -huh. okay? So one day, I'm sitting in the adult pool, okay? This is where the adult swim and, like, the swim teams train. I was like, this is gonna be an easy shift. Nothing's gonna go wrong. So I was sitting in the adult pool, and one of the local high schools, their girls' diving team was there that day, okay? Because there's, like, the adult pool, and there's, like, a big, like, a really deep pool with, like, a diving board, uh -huh. you know, for, like, team. So they came and I was like, okay, you know, this is gonna be a super easy shift. They are trained divers. They know how to swim. It's not gonna be a problem, okay? right? So, you know, for a few of the girls go, I'm like, okay, this is cool, whatever. I'm chilling, but then suddenly, this one girl gets up on the diving board and looks a little bit nervous. And I'm like, you know, yo, she's probably just like a freshman on the high school team. It's uh -huh. the varsity team. It's uh -huh. probably real intense. She gets up on the board, right? She gets up and so she does a dive where she's facing towards the board. So then she's standing at the tip of the board. She's facing like basically backwards. Like she's looking backwards uh -huh. down the board, okay? So she's gonna do this simple dive where you just jump up and then you tuck forward and you go down into the water. It was a very simple dive. I was like, nothing's gonna go wrong, okay? Uh -huh. She jumps off, form looks real good, and then she tucks and I hear a whap as she goes down into the water. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I was only paying half attention because I'm pretty <laughs> bored. Okay, I had not had any food on that shift. I was feeling a little bit lightheaded, okay? I was like, I don't really know what just happened, but you know, again, they're trained divers, it's probably nothing. She climbs up out of the pool and looks okay. I was like, oh, okay? No, I mean, nobody else did anything. Her diving coach. Did anyone teammates, else hear that loud noise? I think everybody did, but nobody said or did anything. So I was like, oh, okay? Yeah, I must have imagined it, I don't know. So I wait, everybody, all the girls get their turn, they go, and then this girl gets up there again. And now this time, I'm I'm not trying to make it obvious, but I'm watching her. I'm trying to, because I don't want to be like a creep, like staring at the girls Just diving. Just staring at I her. I didn't want to be that guy. <laughs> but I was like, I'm watching in case you hurt yourself. So uh -huh. she, she gets up on the board, does the same dive again. And this time I see it very clearly. She jumps up in the air, tucks herself, and then hits her forehead oh. on the diving board oh. and it gets in the water. I'm like, wait a minute. So I blow my whistle, hey, get out of the water, okay? I sit her down and I go, did nobody else see that? What happened? And the diving instructor goes, no, we all saw it the first time, but you didn't do anything, so we thought it was okay. <laughs> so I, dude, then my manager came up to me after that shift and said, Justy, you should have done something after the first time. You in trouble. You were the lifeguard. Yeah. And because you didn't say anything, they were just like, oh, I guess it's all right for her to concuss herself. I, I guess so. And I also got in trouble. Wait. It was the worst day ever. Did you get to keep the job? Yes, but after that, I was moved only to the kiddie pool. <laughs> All the kids are screaming. It was terrible. <laughs> okay, now speaking of watching over sports teams and keeping everything safe, I actually, for real, used to be a soccer referee. Oh, Now, man. I was 12 years old, and at this time, it's hard to get a job Dude, at, like, let, 12 years they old. They let a 12-year-old 
Referee the World Cup? No, 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 no. I was refereeing like kids younger than me. Oh. <laughs> I went to this training because I was like, dude, I really want money to buy stuff like Pokemon cards or like uh -huh. have a phone or oh, stuff like yeah, that. No. I was like, how do I get money? I need a job. Who's going to hire me? Basically, no one. Yeah. But my sister was a soccer referee and she was like, oh, you should also try it. Oh, so it's I was a like, that family sounds easy. trade. Yeah. That sounds easy. You blow a whistle, you tell kids which way the ball goes in the game. And it, that, it, that's easy, right? That's the whole job? Well, the refereeing was actually one of the worst jobs I've ever had <laughs> in my life. Why? So I went through this like two week training course where they teach you all the rules of soccer. You have to learn like all even like the tiny little rules that no one knows. You have to learn all those. They test oh, you on them. Okay. They like bring you out to a soccer field and be like, what What should you do in this situation? It's like a boot camp they for referees. They make referee. you do that to referee toddlers? Yeah. <laughs> so I go to this whole training camp. I'm like, I'm about to be a soccer referee. This is oh, going to be yeah. sick. Oh, yeah. I have the yellow uniform. It's going to look cool. So I go out and I have my first game. It was a seven-year-old soccer team. Okay. So okay. it's a team of seven-year-olds versus another team of seven-year-olds. It's oh, my man. first game ever. I'm feeling real nervous. Yeah, I would be too. You know, I'm scared of seven-year-olds. And I remember my mom drove me to the soccer field where this game was taking place. I was shakily taking my whistle out, putting on my soccer shoes. And she was like, do you want me to stay for the game? Because when you referee, if you make a bad call, sometimes the parents will like yell at you. They'll be like, bad call, referee. Or like, they'll, they'll like tease you. For real. <laughs> like, wow, that referee is a big <laughs> And that was a bad call. <laughs> like, if you make a bad call, the coach will yell at you. And I don't like being yelled at. Yeah. So she was like, would it make you feel better if I, like, stayed and, she like... Was like, would it make you feel better if I held your hand? <laughs> yeah. Did you referee the first game with your mom just standing there <laughs> holding your hand? No. And then someone was like, hey, bad call. Your mom was like, shut up. <laughs> yeah. Is that what happened? I wish. Oh, yeah. That would have been awesome. Yeah, true. But unfortunately, that is against the rules oh. to have your mom on the field. Really? Unless she's a player on your team. She might be. <laughs> okay. My mom was like, Adam, it's okay. Like, don't get nervous. Like, I'll just be there on the sidelines, like, watching you. If any of the parents, like, say anything bad, I'll kind of, like, teach them to not say that. So, like, if someone's like, hey, bad call, my mom will be like, Oh, it wasn't that bad of a call. Like, trying to, like, <laughs> you know, keep people happy, right? Yeah, hey, that ref's got a big neck. <laughs> it's only kind of long. <laughs> At that age, there's, like, two halves. So the first half goes great. It's halftime. I blew the whistle. I'm like, whew. I'm doing great, Mom. I'm feeling really good. Yeah. The game is tied at like two to two. It was actually a pretty intense game considering they were seven-year-olds. <laughs> but it's the second half and I'm like, okay, I'm in the clear. All I got to do is just not mess up. Yeah. It was, it was a tied game. As I said, it was two to two. And there was like maybe two minutes left in the game. Okay. And the kid is like, this kid's dribbling a soccer ball down the field. I'm like running next to him, kind of watching him. So he's like this kid who's like bigger than a lot of the other kids. He's like dribbling the soccer ball down the field. And like one of the defenders comes up to him and the kid like kind of like shoves him out of the way and then kicks the ball and scores it. And that's like that point will win them the game. Okay. So then I'm forced to be in this position where I was like, did he foul the kid or should I count this as a goal? What did you do? I ended up counting it as a goal. Wow. Because I didn't want the kid to push me. Because he was like my size. <laughs> and like all, like, okay, when I was like, goal, half the team was like, yeah, nice yeah, job. Yeah. And the other team that was now losing was like, are you kidding me? They started screaming at me. They were like, Raph, that was a foul. Yeah, that was a Are foul. you blind? Yeah. They were screaming at me, dude. And I was so nervous. I'd like turn bright red. My mom was just on the sidelines, like not even sure what to do. Little did you know, Adam. <laughs> what? That seven-year-old on that fateful day was me. It was a foul. I found that kid. I said, there's no way he's going to call this. And I did it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how we met. Yeah. No, that would be so funny. I'm just imagining you calling it as a foul and the kid calls you. And then your mom comes in and pounds the kid. I'm like, don't bump my son. Basically, how that story ended was I... I quickly ended the game. I left as quick as I could and I just cried on the way home. Because <laughs> I was just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know if I think this job is good for me. <laughs> it was really, really sad. But I was like, I was so stressed out. Uh, did you actually cry? Yeah. <laughs>
But, but I did end up getting like better as a referee. Like that was my uh -huh, first game. Uh -huh. I ended up being a referee for like three years and yeah. I got way better at it. Yeah. But that first game literally scarred me and I almost just quit right there. Wow. Today we're doing a mining adventure. Yeah, it's so much fun. And Foxy's gone ahead, so I'm gonna go try and find him. And you'll never guess who I'm gonna meet today. Just you wait, it's gonna be crazy. Hey Foxy, I found a spawner room. But I was too scared to go in by myself. Don't worry, Boxy. We can go together. Because teamwork makes the dream work. Cool, we found an apple. Yeah. Hey, Foxy, I think I heard someone calling out. Huh? Yeah, I think there's someone here with us. I'm a bit scared. Well, what if it's something scary? We'll defeat it, whatever it is. Hey, guys, what's up? Oh, Justin, it's just you. I have some bad news. I was dropping off some milk for Adam, and I heard some scary noises in the house. That's no good. I left the donuts in a chest, but this milk is getting warm, so I gotta go put it in the fridge now. Bye, guys. I'll see you later. Bye, Justin. Andy dropped off some milk for Adam because Adam needs some milk. He needs some milk. He needs some milk. <laughs> okay, let's go check the security cameras to see if there's something in the house. Okay, and Foxy, the security cameras are in a secret location. Yeah, a secret location. Where do you think it could be? It's super secret. Keep watching to find out. Is it in this room? Uh-uh, we need to craft a ladder to get there. A ladder? How far away could it be? Check it out, Foxy. It's super hidden behind this bookcase. Whoa, that's so super secret. Okay, get ready to jump! Ah! Wee! <laughs> Yay, we made it! Well, I wonder what we're gonna see on these security cameras. Let's turn them on and have a look. Hmm, no one in there. And no one in there. The house is looking pretty empty, Foxy. Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure there's no one in there. Phew, that'd be pretty scary if there was someone in the house. Yeah, but good thing there's not because... Foxy! What? Foxy! It's Pennywise! He was hiding under the bed! Pennywise is scary, Foxy! Yeah, he's a pretty scary clown! Just wait to see what happens with Pennywise! It's so crazy! Okay, Boxy, I think that Pennywise is gone now. Let's go investigate! Yeah, looks like Pennywise is gone! Phew! Yeah, now we can get on with our debt. Oh no, Pennywise is still in the house! We need to come up with a plan to get Pennywise out of the house! Good thinking, Boxy! In the meantime, let's go check the security footage! Yeah, to see what Pennywise is up to! Hey, Pennywise is jumping in our bin! He's gonna get junk all over him! Oh, I've got a great idea! Let's scare him with our microphones! Kitchen! Phew! Looks like he's gone! Job well done! Yeah! What? Oh no! He's jumping on the couch! Boo! Boo! Yeah! He's running away! And it looks like he's gone! Phew! Maybe let's just check one last security camera in the letterbox to make sure! What? He's on the roof! Hey! How did he get up there? Let's scare him from the letterbox! Are you ready, Boxy? I'm ready! Three, two, one, boo! boo! Do you think Pennywise is really gone now? Let's check the house! Yeah, let's see if Pennywise is really gone! Can you see Pennywise? I can't see him anywhere! Are you sure? Yep! Boxy, he's under the bed! Oh no, what are we gonna do? Well, scaring him didn't work. So, maybe we should use the magic words. Abracadabra? Oh, please! We should try asking politely. Oh, 
because you should always talk nicely to people. Exactly! Pennywise! Pennywise, open up! Please, will you come out, Pennywise? Yes, please, Pennywise, will you come out? Pretty, pretty, please, with cherries on top? No! Oh no, that just made him chase us, Foxy! Oh no, being polite always works! Why didn't it work? No time to question these things, Foxy! We need to think of another plan! Phew, yeah, we finally escaped Pennywise! Now, maybe we should think about scaring him again, seeing as being polite did not work! Okay, keep watching to see how we finally get Pennywise! It's so crazy! Hey, Bugsy, how about we set up a trap? Yeah, we should create a whole trap! Great idea! Let's dig a hole! And then we can put some fake grass over top so it looks like grass and tricks Pennywise into falling in! Watch him fall in, everyone! It's gonna be so crazy! Okay, time to call Pennywise! Pennywise, come out! <laughs> Run, Foxy! <laughs> hey, Pennywise, we're over here! Come and get us! Hey, he's going back inside! Aw, Pennywise didn't fall for our trap! We need to think of another plan! Let's get something to scare Pennywise, but what should it be? Ooh, we should use an iron golem! Ooh, great idea! Excuse me, Mr. Villager! Can we please have permission to take an iron golem to scare Pennywise? Yay! Thank you! Come on, iron golem, come with us! Wait till you see Pennywise's reaction! And don't forget to watch till the very end for the last crazy prank! Okay, let's go and put the iron golem in the house to scare Pennywise! Hey, Foxy, I just thought of a problem! What is it, Foxy? One of the iron golem doesn't fit through the door! He's so big, and the door is only small! Don't worry, Foxy, he'll fit! It'll be fine! Are you sure? I'm positive! Look! The iron golem is going through the door! Uh, Foxy! See? Nothing to worry about! Foxy! I told you everything would be fine! Foxy! What? Look! The iron golem is stuck outside! Oh man! At this rate, we'll never get Pennywise out of our house! Don't worry, Bugsy, we'll do it! And remember, there's a crazy twist at the end! Ooh, I don't want to miss the crazy twist! Hmm, let's watch Pennywise to see if we can figure out what to do! Okay, Foxy, we can do it because we're a team! And teamwork makes the dream work! Hey, look! Pennywise is in the kitchen! He's trying to get into the fridge! Hey, I think he might be hungry! Hey, Foxy! Remember Justin dropped off some donuts for the party later? Oh, yeah! I almost forgot! We should go and find the donuts and see if that tempts Pennywise! Great idea! You're full of good ideas, Foxy! Cause you're my best friend, Foxy! 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know the donuts are around here somewhere! Oh, I found them! Whoa, so many donuts! Can we eat them all? Not yet, Foxy! We need to give them to Pennywise! Okay! Ooh, I can't wait for the party later! Too. I can't wait for all the donuts and all the milk! Hey, Pennywise, we have donuts for you! Yeah, we heard you were hungry! Here you go, take this donut, Pennywise! Hey, he loves the donut! He was just hungry! And now will you finally get out of our house, Pennywise? Yay! Thanks, Pennywise! See you later! Pennywise was actually really you're right! Hey, Pennywise! You wanna come to a party? Yeah, it's a donut party! Yeah! What a crazy twist! Pennywise was actually really nice, and now he's coming to our donut party! Hey guys, I came back with some more milk for Adam! Thanks, and Pennywise is here too! 
Here, Pennywise, you want some too? Yeah! <laughs> Yay! This is the best donut party ever! Oh yeah! 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 And Pennywise came too! How crazy is that? We were so scared of you, Pennywise, and then you became our friend! Oh, it's time for Pennywise to go! Take some donuts for the road! Bye, Pennywise! See ya, Pennywise! We'll miss you! Let's go! Donut party! <laughs> I gotta go, guys! See ya! Bye, Justin! We finally got Pennywise out of our house!